Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bono Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Tournament Rosters Corn. So we are looking at tournament rosters for every team in Blood Bowl 2020, whether it's from the core rulebook, the Teams of Legend PDF, the expanded NAF teams or new teams that Games Workshop are releasing in Spike Magazine. So Corn has landed, it is all frenzy, it is all murder and you can find the rules for them in Spike 13 that came out this weekend technically anyway what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some tournament rosters for this team now we're going to look at two different tournament formats we're not going to go deep into skills we're going to suggest some good ones for your players and especially if they're important but we're going to look at some 1100 builds so 1.1 million and some 1.2 million builds now when it comes to tournaments these days they vary between 1100 1200 1250 so i figure that if we go on the low end at 1100 and the average end at 1200 it can give you some inspiration for rosters and then you can flex up or down to meet the tournament that you're going to. Okay, so first up, we've got Max Strength 1100. So we're going to start by looking at a couple of vanilla builds. And when I say vanilla builds, I mean no star players. Star players are very popular in this edition because they got cheap and they got good. But we don't necessarily need them in a corn roster. Now, it's a bit tricky to fit everything in at 1 million. But at 1100, you kind of get to flex out a little bit. And you are going to have some skills being tier two so you're going to get a few extra skills probably in your tournament skill package so max strength 1100 comes in bang on 1100 and you get the blood spawn you get four blood seekers four corn gores two linemen and two re-rolls so there is a little bit of flexibility with this roster but we'll come back to that in a second because you are going to get some skills in this one and you should get at least one double skill and that's the key element here if you get a double then one of these guys here you got four corn gores should be able to take the leader skill on passing that's going to basically get you that third re-roll. And because you've got four corn gores, not every one of your players is going to have a frenzy as well. So it kind of makes it a more consistent build. By taking leader on one of your corn gores and by taking four corn gores, you're going to be making less frenzy blocks and you're going to have three re-rolls to save you when it goes wrong. But... The most excellent thing here is this the insane amount of frenzy and strength that you get in this roster because you do get to run the blood spawn and all four of what i consider some of the best players in this game now the blood seekers strength four with frenzy no nega traits and armor 10 plus means that they are super resilient and they're going to crush most things but that blood spawn being able to stack its strength with frenzy and the fact that it starts with claws and mighty blow means that it's going to be taking out a lot of people a lot of the time the cool thing with this roster, it's tier 2, so you are going to get some skills to play with. If you get more than one double, you can go for block, for example, on the Bloodspawn. That's going to make him really offensive and um, really good on defense as well. You could take pro, which is going to make him a little bit more efficient when it comes to activating. But this guy gets strength skills and gets mutation skills on general, uh, on normal access, so you don't have to spend doubles. So if, for example, you get one double and you want to spend it getting your third reroll using the leader skill, that guy could pick up Brawler to make his blocks better because he's going to be making four die blocks most of the time. That's two dice frenzy, two dice, four dice there. Brawler means that that's going to change it basically to five dice and that's going to probably get you a pal. Now, guard is going to help the rest of your team be better. And the great thing about this piece having guard is it's strength five. It's tough. It's going to be hard for your opponent to block. Now, that blood spawn taking guard will allow your linemen to make good blocks and will allow your cord, uh, your blood seekers to make even better blocks. So if you're up against a, a black orc team or something like that, actually the blood spawn having guard means you can line up two blood seekers next door to him and make a ton of frenzy blocks and then attack with the blood spawn. But if you want the blood spawn to be your primary blitzing removal piece, if you want to make a mini bloodthirster, then giving it horns is a great way to go. This dude's just then going to fly around on a 2 plus and strength 6 blitz people, which is going to be 2 to 3 dice depending on what else you've got going on. Now, you've got 4 blood seekers as well, block, mighty blow, guard, all really great skills for these guys. If you are thinking it's going to be a quite bash heavy tournament, you can sneak in a couple of claws on mutations for them as well. So if you're thinking it's going to be chaos dwarf, dwarf, black orcs that clause is going to give you a better advantage than Mighty Blow will against high armoured targets. If your uh, tournament format is looking like a lot of skills and potentially some lower armour stuff, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. Chucking Tackle on one of those guys is going to help you out. 
against certain stars. Anyway, uh, Corn Gores are great pieces. We've already talked about the fact they can take leader on a double. Sure hands on one of them is going to make them a primary ball carrier. And in a resurrection format where you're not too worried about SPPs, you've got the sure hands. You could also go for a mutation and get extra arms instead, meaning that you're picking up on a 2+. plus. But if the game here is to spend money on players, not re-rolls, then sure hands gives you a better chance than a 2+. plus pickup. 3++ plus plus is better than 2+. plus. So unless you have an extra team reroll, but we don't. Strip Ball is a great combo for Corn Gores. They've got Strength 4 on the Blitz because they've got Horns, and they've got Juggernaut, which pushes, which turns a both down into a push. When you roll a push, when you are attacking with uh, Strip Ball, the ball will pop out. So if you want to go for a dedicated Bullhawk, that combos really well with Jugs. Or you can go for Wrestle. There's a ton of different things you can do with the Corn Gores there. Now, the Lineman, if you do want to put some skills on there, Kick is going to be pretty great on this team. I know I say that for every team, but hey, turns out Kick is a very useful skill. What you can do against a slower team is drop the ball way back against their um, end zone, and then it just means you've got numbers, you've got strength, you've got frenzy. The more players you have, the better assists you've got, the better assists, the better blocks, and you're throwing probably twice as many dice as normal teams would. So if you can pin them back, you can absolutely mince them on the front line and then go back for seconds or you can drop it really close allow them to bunch up and then just use your blood spawn and blood seekers to just rinse through their team but if your tournament is a little bit bigger if you've got a 1200 build you can advance your team ever so slightly so at 1200 we can build a roster that's 1190 blood spawn four seekers we drop a corn gore we have only three we can take an additional player then with alignment and a core reroll there for three rerolls so what you end up with is 12 players which is a bench now the other roster Apart from the two linemen, everyone is basically decent armor, armor 9+, plus, so it's not too much of a vulnerability. The more linemen you have, the more linemen you are likely to lose. So this roster at 1200 with three core rerolls and 12 players and all five of your high strength pieces, losing one of those corn gores is not the worst thing in the world. You've got that bench and because you've got that extra integral reroll, you can then redistribute that double that you had eyed up for leader. So you can go for block or pro on that blood spawn and... Uh, it's probably the top tier uh, double, I would say, as in you know secondary skill. It would definitely be block on the Bloodspawn and leader on the Corn Gore there. But if you've got three rerolls, you don't probably need that leader one, which means you're rocking up at 1200 with five strength four or five pieces, and all of them at this point can take block. Okay, so that's the vanilla rosters with no star players, and we have to do it. We have to go straight in there with Hack Flem Shuttle scuttle spike i do that every time so we'll start at the bottom edge so we can see what you can squeak into an 1100 roster if you want to run corn at a tournament where stars are legal so the frack flem 1100 roster comes in at 1090 you get hack flem scuttle spike three blood seekers three corn gores five linemen and two re-rolls so it is quite a skinny roster at the bottom end you've got just enough players for this to be legal 11 core plus your star player actually that is enough for a bench you've got three blood seekers which is three of those strength four frenzy pieces and three of those corn gores you can do a bit of juggling around and what you could essentially do is drop down to one con corn gore um, save that 40k that gives you 50k left over and you can take basically an extra player uh, an extra player or an apothecary to keep the rest of your roster alive the only way you can fit four blood seekers in with this roster is by dropping a reroll um, or dropping all of your corn gores now actually if you don't need a corn gore as a ball carrier you can definitely do that so you can fandangle this roster drop those three corn gores and replace them with linemen so you've got eight linemen at that point um, and that would give you 60k which would be enough to take one of those eight linemen and boost it up to a blood seeker you'd be running two re-rolls four blood seekers and uh, seven linemen at that point so a little bit more strength but a lot less control and you kind of want that corn gore at least one of them to be there to receive a double to get you that third reroll for leader now hack Flem is going to be able to do almost every piece of ball handling and if it comes to a pinch you've got those linemen who are edge three plus so it's not like you're completely up against it but those corn gores mean that's three players who are not frenzying which is going to be really useful you've got hack Flem who is just unnecessarily good he's basically one plus to pick up the ball and one plus to dodge with an integral reroll so hack Flem is going to do a ton of scoring and the rest of your team's going to do a ton of goring 
but this is the roster I think we might see a bit more at tournaments. So Frack Flem 1200 comes in bang on 1200. So Hack Flem, Scuttle Spike, one Blood Spawn and three Blood Seekers. So with a bit of cash and a bit of moving around, you can change that up ever so slightly. What you can do is drop the Blood Spawn, take the fourth Blood Seeker and uh, pad out your roster with an extra player or the Apothecary. But that Blood Spawn, being able to take him at 1200, you're likely to be going up against other big players okay you're going to end up in a situation where there's a bit of a kaiju battle here you're going to be facing a minotaur um maybe even grashnak but you're, you're probably going to be facing griff you're probably going to be facing uh, you know deep root or morgue at this level and you do kind of want a big a big boy on the line so as much as i love the blood seekers when you're playing at 1200 level having that blood spawn with claws mighty blow and strength five is going to be a pretty strong punch uh, so being able to run that three of those strength four pieces three corn gores and four linemen with two rerolls it gives you a ton of flexibility with your roster again skills wise you can chuck leader on a corn gore you can min max this one a little bit more and like i said you can play around with the costings drop a reroll go for just two drop those corn gores and boost up another blood seeker because you've got hack blend to be your ball carrier but i think this one potentially gives you the better all-round roster 12 players Big guy there at strength five. Three really good linebackers. Three really good players. They're better than Chaos Beastmen. And Chaos Beastmen are really solid. You can pick up that leader reroll to be three rerolls. And you've got Hack Flem to just compete. Now at this tiering, at sorry, at this tiering, which is tier two, you should get a decent amount of skills. But at this level of competition at 1200, you are going to want to sneak a tackle on there at some point. So either a Corn Gore or a Bloodseeker getting tackle makes them a really good safety. I love the Bloodseeker with tackle here in the backfield. It's going to be able to four die most of the offensive threats and that's probably going to be enough to delete them. Talking of deleting players, we've got Grashnak, 1,200 here. So 1.2 million roster uh, comes in at 1,190. You get Grashnak, Blackhoof, four Bloodseekers, two Corn Gores, five Linemen and two Rerolls. So... You drop the Blood Beast, but I think you almost improve on that Blood Beast by having a Strength 6 player. Now, Grashnak does have um, a bit of uh, Negatrate in the fact that he's got Wild Animal. Uh, sorry, Unchanneled Fury. But he's got Frenzy, Horns, Mighty Blow plus one, and Thick Skull. Movement six. He's faster, he's stronger, and he's got a great ability that um, allows you to just add a dice to a block at any one point in the game so this guy can run around and uh, basically three die morgue if you want to and with frenzy that becomes a six die block so grashnak is going to be able to drop any player on any turn that you want him to whether they'll stay down or not is a different matter but he should be able to six die almost anybody in the game in every situation so grashnak gives you the biggest cruise missile potential and then you are backed up by four of the blood seekers you've got two corn gores there to be uh, great ball carriers one with leader for reroll three one with sure hands to be your primary ball carrier you should have enough skills then to chuck potentially just four combat skills on those blood seekers tackle on one guard on maybe one or two and then block on another one to be a secondary blitzer there to back up grashnak gives you a decent distribution of skills you've got a bit of frenzy tackle in there at strength four that's a pretty great combo and that's just going to give you a ton of power and a pretty decent offense now it wouldn't be a corn roster without trying to maximize the amount of death you can run and we've got max spleen ripper in this edition and you can fit him into an 1100 roster pretty nicely so the great thing about max spleen ripper is he's a strength four chainsaw that once per game can make two chainsaw attacks that gives you a ton of potential now this roster here he's backed up by four blood seekers two corn gores five linemen and that second reroll so again you can put leader on one of the corn gores and you get that third reroll in there now the downside here is that you are running 11 players plus max max is great and if you get one or two removals you are having a wonderful time the downside of a chainsaw player is if you don't roll a six and argue the call cool, after one drive he's gone but if you receive with max spleen ripper and these blood seekers and the corn gores you should be able to start removing players and having that one turn where you can just double chainsaw a team it should give you the numerical advantage to then start piling on. And that's why I think Spleen Ripper will combo so well with Corn, is because you should be able to at least stun a couple of dudes on that opening turn. Then you're playing 11 against 9, and that should give you enough assists for every one of those frenzy blocks to be a two die bro a two die block which then goes to a four die block so you have the potential here to open with a double chainsaw attack and then throw about 79 block dice which again 
can cause a bit of a death cascade and I think it's a really good one to run with and at 1100 it's a real bargain and genuinely speaking quite terrifying. And last roster for the day we have to do it we have to look at Grack and Crumbleberry. So Grack 1200 comes in exactly at 1200 and the star player of choice or the star player combo of choice is Grack and Cornballberry. So you take Grack and Crumbleberry as a combo. You're backed up by four Bloodseekers, two Corn Gores, that five Lyman and two reroll set that is actually looking really solid. It's basically my starting league uh, roster. Wow, I can take my starting league roster basically and uh, and run up with Grack and Crumbleberry. That's pretty awesome. So Grack and Crumbleberry gives you a strength five piece, so you still have a big guy. You're missing out on the the claws and frenzy element of it but you've got those blood seekers so you should have enough of that what this does gives you is two players one of them already has sure hands so we talked about the two corn gores going leader sure hands that frees up one of these skills so if you're in a five or six skill set that means you can spread them across your blood seekers you may even be able to stack them or you will get a potentially a free skill to chuck on your lineman and with this combination chucking kick on this means you can pin them deep and you can make up for the fact that you're missing a big frenzy big guy by just maximizing those blocks on the line and you've got a ogre there ready to go with mighty blow and a sure hands piece and it gives you the kick th the kick teammate angle as well and i think it's just a brilliant way to combo this is going to be a really fun roster to go with obviously hack Flem is you know technically um better in potentially every single way but this one you get a bit more muscle you get the fun of a throw teammate and actually a pretty great modeling opportunity to sneak an extra sure hands player in on there as well Okay, so there you have it, corn rosters for tournaments. This is a tier two roster. It's got a load of strength and it will be brilliant fun to run our tournaments. It is probably not going to be top, uh, you know, top of the charts a lot of the time. But when this team combos off well, when those powers start flowing and the blood starts flowing as well, corn is going to be able to power its way to victory. And there are definitely going to be some coaches out there that just spam mighty blow or claws and just try and wipe the pitch. And you know what? A lot of the time it's going to work. So if you can run a strong corn roster backed up by someone like Hackflem to maximize that ball carrying ability, this roster could combo out massively. And then if you consider the fact that you can chuck Max Spleen Ripper in there for a cheap cost as well, that's Chainsaw, Chainsaw, and then a bunch of Frenzy Blocks, corn has the potential. Corn is probably the most capable team at pitch wiping. So if you're an old school chaos player that loves the grind, that loves going for the pitch wipe, if you are looking for the most casualties in a tournament, then I think Korn is probably the right place to be. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of Korn in competitive formats. I'm looking forward to seeing how they land and uh, I'm probably going to have to wait till Beachhead to see it in February, but that's okay. That gives us a bit of time to do some playtesting. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.